to come right before his message of he is the 24-7 God. He is our 24-7 God. Say that. He is my 24-7 God. The last line of that song is, help me know you are near. How many has issues with that? How many think he's never near there sometimes? I'm here to tell you this morning, and God is here to tell you this morning, that he is the 24-7 God. Amen? As I said before, he's not a piece of stone, not a chunk of wood, or a myth, or anything else that other gods seem to be, or a bird, or whatever. He is real, he is alive, and he is in control. Amen? We can give him a shout of glory this morning for that. Amen. We serve the risen, living God. And he is 24-7. Let me share a little bit. I'm going to share this. How do I know that? How do I know that he is the 24-7? His word tells me. All through his word. This is going to freak you out. First of all, he is the God who thinks of you every day. Did you know that? God thinks of you every day. Every day. Psalm 68, 19, it says, Praise be to the Lord, to our God, our Savior, who daily, say that word, daily, bears our burdens. He's thinking of you constantly. Every, every day. It's simple. Lee said this this morning. Today will be a great day. <laughs> Today is going to be a great day and is a great day. Amen? Because he's already thinking of me. Because he is, I am on God's mind every day. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I wonder if I'm on the mind of a piece of wood or a chunk of rock that some call God's or a cat that waves his hand. I don't think so. But I am on the living God's mind every day, and so are you, amen? That's something to be very, very thankful of. That's why we can get up and say, you know what? This is the day that the Lord has made. He's already thinking of me before I even get up, amen? His message for you right now is that it makes this a great day. That makes it a great day, that he's thinking of you. Amen? Set the concerns that are on your mind this morning aside. And let your first thoughts today be, this is going to be great. Oh man, this is going to be awesome. Amen? This is going to be an awesome day. This is going to be a great day. Why? Because I know that I'm in God's plans and it starts fresh every morning. Fresh every morning. He's not a stale God. Remember when I was uh, ordained as a pastor, the Lord spoke to me that night, don't be a stagnant pool, because I'm not. Remember that? Don't be a stagnant pool. That's why I'm always bubbly. That's why I'm always happy, because I know, and I, I know who I serve. And it's good. Yeah, troubles are going to come. But he's thinking of me every day. Amen? He's always thinking of me daily. His mercies are new every day. Amen? A new day, a new life. Each and every day something good is going to happen because he is for me and he is for you. Amen? Can you say that this morning, church? Can you? <clears throat> Can we say that with belief? I like how the King James Version says it. It says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. He daily loads us with benefits. All we have to do is look. All we have to do is look. Listen, folks, get this. He is the God who thinks of you every day. Give him a shout of glory. Secondly, we won't be long. We won't be long because you don't have to be three hours with a pure message from the Lord. The second thing is, every hour, God looks out for you. Every hour, God looks out. Say every hour. Every hour. Second Thessalonians 3, verse 3. But the Lord is faithful, 
who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. He's faithful. He looks out for you. Amen? The Lord is faithful. God is true to his promise. He cannot lie or pull any punches. What he promises, he delivers. How many can believe that? What he promises, he delivers. Can I get an amen on that, church? He is faithful. He is faithful. He will establish you. He will establish you. The word establish means this, to fix, make fast, confirm, strengthen. That's what establish means. He will establish or confirm us in our beliefs. Amen? That's good. That's very good. Look at Acts 16, verse 5. So the church were strengthened in their faith and increased in number daily. We're doing this. We're, go, we're going through the, the Acts, Paul and the men, at, uh, on Tuesday night. You want to get out and, and listen and learn what God is doing. It's amazing, and it's an amazing book to learn, the book of Acts, because that's the beginning of the church. And I say this on, on Tuesday nights. Where did we lose this? Where did we derail this thing? We did it with the denomination stuff, for starters. We have been, we have been through the book of Acts, and we are, I believe, on 16, at chapter 16, and not once have I seen a denomination. Not once. Anyways, I got a little tangent off there. And a little, anyways. But the church was strengthened in their faith. And the next line says, and guard you, and guard you. He is our defender, and he stands on guard for us. Amen? I believe that wholeheartedly this morning. What can mere man do to me? What can he do to me? Amen? Because God's my defender. From who? From the evil one. I think we all know who that is. I think we all have, and have confidence in God as your protector. Because Satan's out there trying to trip us up. But my God is for me. He is for me and he is guarding me. Amen? That's something to be thankful this morning. Uh, the more truth we have in our souls, the more stable we become because God is faithful to us. Amen? That's a truth, folks. That's a truth. He is faithful. I may sometimes, um, I'm not sometimes faithful. And neither are you. We, let's be honest. But he is always faithful. Amen? That's the God we serve. He is faithful. Amen? What a great thing. Lamentations 3, verses 22 and 23. It says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is what? Your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. I want to thank the Lord this morning because he is faithful and he is for me and he watches out for me. Not every day, like every day, but every hour. Every hour, amen? The next one is this. Oh, hold on, I'm not done. God's faithfulness towards us inspires trust. It should inspire trust. He's faithful, I need to trust. Amen? Trusting in God's faithfulness towards us gives us stability because we know that he will be true to his word. How many know he's true to his word? I've read that Bible from one end to the other, and I've never seen him go, oops, once. Not once. Oh, I forgot that. Oh, sorry, I, I, it left my mind. Not once. He is faithful to the end. Amen? And we have his support in any situation we face. Anything we face. Amen? Now, every hour, God looks out for you. Every hour, God looks out for you. So now we've, we've established that every day he's looking out for me. He's thinking of me. Every hour he looks out for me. Did you know every minute he cares for you? <laughs> every minute? 1 Peter 5, 7. 
it says this, and this is interesting. It says, cast all your care, all right? cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. He cares for you. When we have the ability to cast our cares upon God, it shows true humility. I want to say that again because we need to get this. When we have the ability to cast our cares upon God, it shows true humility. Remember last week, I think, and the week before, we've been talking about Babylon. And what are the three things that keeps us out of Babylon? Can you remember? This is a test. (laughs) Exalt God. Every day, exalt God. The second one was acknowledge His ways. In other words, don't just read it and put it down and say, read my word today, do it. If If it's against what He's against, stop it. If He says do it, do it. Amen? We'll let that run through. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But it was exalt God, acknowledge His ways, and the third thing was humble yourself. Humble yourself. When we have the ability to cast out our cares upon God, it shows true humility. Amen? Humble yourself. It is proud presumption to take things into our own worry and care. When God has promised to take them. Can you hear me, church? Oh, what am I going to do tomorrow? I don't know what's happening tomorrow. I gave that to God. It's not my problem. Because he said, cast them. Amen? Matthew 6, 31, 33. So don't worry saying, what shall we eat? Mm. Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Oh my goodness, I've got nothing to wear. For the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's where the church is today. We need to seek righteousness. Amen? That's heavy today. That's what God's saying today. And all these things, get what? All these things will be added unto you. I wonder why I don't have them. Ah, seek his kingdom first and his righteousness. Now that word cast, it says cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. That's rather an energetic word, isn't it? Cast. He doesn't say lay them. Lay all your cares. He says, cast them. Is there any fisherman in the house? Have you ever casted like this? Lee, give us a show here. That's how you do it. Throw the thing. Oh, I got some anxiety. Cast it out. Not lay it out. Oh, here's my anxiety. Be easy on it, Lord. I might need it back. Cast the thing out of there. Come on. Cast all your anxieties. Uh, It says that. It says, cast all your anxieties. It's the idea of throwing away from you. You know something? This work of casting can be so difficult that sometimes you might need two hands. The hands of prayer. Or you might need two hands. The hands of faith. That's a big fish. Start throwing them out there. Two hand them. Pray about it. Give it to God. God, I'm having a problem with this. I know I have to cast it to you, but I'm having a problem. And he said, you you might have to use two hands on this one. Lord, will you take it? Thank you. Simple. Simple. You don't have to stand there with a four and a half hour prayer. Just give it to them. Jesse. Absolutely. That's casting it out. 
I've had it with this. Lord, take it. He's good with it. He says, cast it. Amen. Prayer tells you God what the prayer tells God what the care is. And faith believes that God can do it. Amen? Now well, we gotta get this stuff. We're in the kids kingdom. We're we're kingdom kids. We're God's kids. Amen. A lot of people never come to the place where they believe in God who cares. But let me tell you, the God of the Bible, the God who really is there, is the God who cares for you. Amen? Every minute, every minute, God cares for you. Why am I sharing all this? Why am I sharing all this? Because this, the last one, because every second, God loves you. Every second, God loves you. Look at Jeremiah 31.3. 3, 31, 3. The Lord appeared to us of old. Uh, the Lord appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Anybody ever been drawn to the Lord? Did you save yourself? Or did he save you? He loves you every second. Every second, folks. Say every second. God's great message to Israel was an assurance of his love. Anchored in eternity past and eternity future. Amen? It's an everlasting love. And get this. It's also extended to you and me. We are grafted in. You didn't know you were an Israelite, did you? <laughs> you are. You're grafted in. God says you are grafted in with his people. I'm an Israelite. I get when Paul says, you know, I'm a Roman. And I'm a Jew. And I'm an Israelite. And I'm thinking, what one are you? And he says, no, I'm grafted in. I'm all them. Because God said I was. Amen? That's us. We're grafted in. This is good stuff. Wow, what an amazing God we serve. Hallelujah. Because of God's everlasting love and promise remains to us because we are grafted in to his covenant love. Amen? Loving kindness. Loving kindness. That Hebrew word means chest. C-H-E-S-E-D. Chest. Means giving one's Self fully with love and compassion. Because every second he loves us. Isn't that cool? That's why we can say, I serve the 24-7 God. We serve a 24-7 God, folks. Amen? He's not made of wood. As I said, he's not made of stone. He's not a myth. Ever watch the Ten Commandment movie? Charlton Heston won the best one. The four-hour movie, not the, excuse me, Hollywood one. The good one with Charlton Heston where his hair never moves. It can be a tornado and his hair stays the same. It's just, it's a great movie. But in it, one of my favorite actors was Yul Brenner, who played Ramses II. He takes his dying son... And he lays him on that statue of that bird, whatever that God was supposed to be. And he tries to bring him back to life. I get thinking of that every time I think of myths and stone and wood. And I think, of, well, there's a great example, that movie there. It's just a piece of stone carved in like a bird, and that's a God. No, I don't think so. Not the one we serve. Not the one we serve. By the way, the plague that happened there was my God. <laughs> my God. Amen? But he's not made of that. He is our God Almighty. Give him a worship praise of glory this morning, folks. Give it to him. Hallelujah. Wake up every day thinking that. Thank you, Jesus. I know you love me, and I know you're the God of the second, the God of the minute, the God of the hour, and the God of the day. 
You're not the God of the weekend. You're not the God of Sunday only. You're not the God from 8 to 5. You're the God at 4 in the morning, which means we need to have a talk, Lord. <laughs> 3 and 4 in the morning, I'm not very good. No, I'm just kidding. Sometimes he has to get us up at that time because that's when our minds are empty so he can speak to us. Amen? I want to talk to you. And I'll wake you up when you're ready. And that might be 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. Amen? But let me tell you something. When he tells you something, you hear him. You hear him. I put more sermons together at 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning or at least wrote a lot of stuff down and then went back to bed and then got up. because I know I'd have forgot it. But... He's good. He's that way. He's a 24-7 God. Amen? Thank you, Lord. I'm going to call the worship team up. We're going to do one more song. One more song, and then we're going to close. But as we do that song, I want you to think about him. Think of who he is today to you. I'm going to have Pastor Karen close at the end, but I think this is in this song. said, God loves you every second. It hit me in the heart. And I was like, oh. Absolutely. And it makes me think, he loves me. I am one in how many billion people in this world? And he loves me. Yeah. Wow. That's a big wow for everybody. Wow. Creator of Just the had world. to say that, well, sorry. He created everything. I hate being emotional. Good. <laughs> but hey, the Lord wouldn't have it any other way, right? This is life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm excited about this excited. song. That's okay. That's all good. We should be excited for God. Amen. I love you back. <laughs> it says no. As one of the things that. Here we go. Give me a second, Kim. All right. One of the things that, another thing that I was thinking about, and I forgot to share this, because I do get excited like Kim, and I get going, I'm thinking, yeah, and then all of a sudden after you went, oh, I should have said this, I should have said this. But remember when Elijah went over and he knew who his God was. He knew his God was real. He serves the same God we did. And, and he went to... Uh, uh, remember he went to the people and, and they said well you know he dug the trench and he says where's your you know maybe he's sleeping <laughs> maybe your God is sleeping or maybe he's not here today maybe he's somewhere else and everything and I got thinking about that and I thought isn't that true like like to myths and unbeliefs it's like well God's not here today he's uh, you know he's over there so you might have to hold on, but he's not. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. He's for us, amen? He's not, you know, maybe he's sleeping. No, he's not sleeping. <laughs> maybe you should maybe, you know, set up any, he, he's a consuming fire, but you know the story anyway. <laughs> and your point is? The point is, is he's a good God. <laughs> Just joking with you, Pastor Phil. Amen. I just can't see the way you hold me Or how I'm hidden in your heart Minds don't know all you've told me Or how I ache for where you It's invisible to the world, incredible to the angels, and not succeeding. Have they seen this side? Everlasting life, you are all alone.
message to us this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us every second, every minute, every hour, every day. Thank you, Lord, that we can cast our cares upon you. Help us, Lord, today to do just that. Whatever we might be carrying this morning, Lord, we just cast that to your feet now. And we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for caring about me and my burdens and my anxieties. Thank you, Lord, for being with us this morning, for your presence being in this place. Help us to carry that presence with us as we go out into our community, as we meet with our family and our friends. And bring us back this evening, Lord, knowing that we've spent time with you. 
coming, Lord, this evening to bless those that you have given songs to and testimony to that are coming this evening ready, willing, and able That's right. to share you with us. Hallelujah. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Woo. God bless. That was awesome. 